All right. We're going to go ahead and get started on the Real Scout training today. My name is Ashley Gendro, Lair Realty Partners, and I am a project specialist, project manager. So I do a lot of different projects and a lot of um, agent one-on-ones with the tech bundle, which is Isact, which is a CRM, which there is a lunch and learn on that on Thursday. And I will be the host for that as well. Boston Logic, a website, and the one that we're going to go over today, which is Real Scout. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And what I'm going to talk about first before we dive in into Real Scout and the nitty gritty of Real Scout is Zillow and a couple of truths about Zillow and why you should steer your clients away from Zillow. The top reason is that Zillow has a very limited functionality for their search. So you can only search uh, by bedrooms or bathrooms, but if you want to look for a colonial or a cape or a fixer upper or oceanfront homes. Zillow doesn't have that capacity. Zillow is a very basic search engine for you. Another thing is that their listings are frequently out of date. So by the time um, a client sees a listing on Zillow, it could actually already be under contract on MLS or it could already be off market or it could already be closed. So Zillow is not always up to date or the most accurate info. Um, a lot of the times they are inaccurate more than they are accurate. And when you find a listen on Zillow, tip number three is you're most likely not going to be contacting the listen agent themselves. So for example, if I had 123 Main Street in Chelmsford, Massachusetts listed, and you came across that listen on Zillow, and you wanted to reach out to an agent, you would be reaching out to a Zillow representative who would then match you with a agent in their database that obtains Zillow leads. It wouldn't be myself as the listing agent. And a lot of the times when Zillow does um, get those agents, what they do is they will sell their data. So their email, their phone number, they'll sell all of that information to mortgage brokers, other title companies, realtors. They sell that information to other people in the industry. So if you get an unsuspected call from an unknown number, it's probably because, you know, you reached out to Zillow. They sold your information to third-party services. Another reason Zillow is not to be trusted or used, um, and another reason why Real Scout is to be used is because it's up to date information. The information's accurate, and the information on Real Scout is accuracy. And if you did a home valuation to get an idea of what your home is worth in the current market, it would be more accurate than Zillow. Um, Zestimates are not known for accuracy. It's based on the home sale and the tax data. So if you live in a town that is saturated with foreclosures or short sales, those are not lumped into that data in Zillow. So you're missing all of that information. So Zillow gathers their information just based on the tax data and the home sale data. Another thing is, is that Zillow doesn't take into account external factors. And what I mean by external factors is if there's an industrial plant um, next door, or if there's a resort community next door, or if there's an airport within two miles from the house, Zillow doesn't take all of those external factors into account as well as the school boundary lines. It's not going to know, you know, if you're in this part of Chelmsford, your child could go to this elementary school or that elementary school. It's not going to know that. Whereas in MLS, as well as Real Scout, which is a search engine um, based from MLS, which is better, I think, in my opinion, because it's more user friendly. It allows your clients to interact with you more. Um, so the school boundary lines are going to be in Real Scout because that information is pulled from MLS. And another thing about Zillow is that, <clears throat> excuse me, they also charge. Um, or not charge, 
their inventory changes daily. So especially if there's not a lot on the market, they might put something that was listed three days or pardon me, three months ago as a new list and when it's really not a new list and, and you're like, why am I seeing this as a new list? And so they're not all, they're not very accurate with their information. And again, some top reasons is they're not accurate. They sell information and um, I'm just going to go back a slide. Their functionality is very limited. So if you want a specific search, you can't do that within Zillow. And their information, their listings is out of date and inaccurate. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and switch gears to the Real Scout engine itself. If anyone has any questions about Zillow, just put them in the chat for me. And I will go ahead and answer them the best that I can. Hi, audio is echoing. Is anyone else having um, trouble with my audio echoing? If you are, let me know. And I will see what I can do to uh, fix that. Thank you, Lo Yolanda. Also, chat is disabled. Yolanda, your chat should be enabled for everybody. I have it enabled for everyone. To everyone. Give me one second. Um, this is my first time doing this. So I did show chat and I did enable it for everyone. So let me um, get Sergio to hop on here and see why your chat is not um, enabled because it should be. Why are they disabled? Everyone? Okay, guys, go ahead and try to chat now. I think I fixed it. Let me know if you can chat now. Perfect. All right, now that we've got our chat working, let's go ahead and go to Real Scout. Apologies for the technicalities. As I said, this is my first time hosting um, a Lunch and Learn and I'm excited to do it. So along the way, I am gonna be uh, learning a bit. So just bear with me and we'll get through it together. So you're gonna go to the Real Scout homepage and for me, it has my name dot realscout.com slash home search. So what I'm going to do since I already have an account, I'm going to sign in. I said sign in. And when you sign in, you want to make sure that you're signing in as an agent and not as a buyer. There is a different version for clients, for your clients to use. And there is a different version for agents as well as a mobile app. So on your um, mobile device, whether it be iOS or Android or another uh, platform for a mobile device, you will want to download the Real Scout app, the agent dashboard one. If you do not see agent dashboard, then you're just downloading the client basin one, which you could use and you could see what your clients see, but you get more with the agent side than you do with the client side. So we're going to go ahead and log in. So this, I use this with my, my clients. Um, and, and 
what's good about Real Scout that they just announced a couple weeks ago, so it's still fairly new, is this um, feature called Auto Nurture. So what you can do on Auto Nurture is you can have your clients enabled on this. So my automation status is enabled, excuse me, for all my new contacts that I input. And what Auto Nature does is that it automatically sends them list and alerts, home value alerts, or market activity alerts to them. Um, so if there's not enough information to create a auto nurture alert, they'll be put on an email drip campaign that sends them popular listings. And then it gives your client the ability to ask you more information. And so you could always disable it if you don't want it on. You could disable it right here. Disable auto nurture. It's going to give you a little pop up that says, are you sure you want to disable it? You can click disable or cancel. I don't want to cancel it. I want to keep my client on it. So that's a feature that I love about Real Scout is this new auto nurture. So it automatically knows that if there's not enough data for a specific area. So some of my clients are looking um, in the kind of northern seacoast area of New Hampshire. So sometimes there's not a lot of data up there. So what Auto Nurture does for them is it will create an email drip for them and it'll send them popular listings in their um, specific market area. And I see we have another question and try to log. I have a really bad echo. Does anyone else have an echo besides Yolanda? Let me know in the chat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the dashboard and um, I'm going to show you guys how to set up a new client on a search. And I'm going to go over the dashboard with you. Thanks for letting me know that there's no echo, uh, Robin, and who else was it? And Shauna, I appreciate that. So this is the dashboard. And what you have on the dashboard is you can engage with your clients with email alerts. You can enhance listen presentations. You can learn more about markets and you can market my, you can market your real scale platform. So what I do when I come to my dashboard is I go to my live feed. And the reason why I go to my live feed is because I can see Patsy and Kenny have opened this email for this list in at 225, um, pardon me, for $225,000 in Wakefield, New Hampshire. And it's also going to tell you how many times they've opened it. So for them, it's their third time opening this email or this property. And when they open it, it's going to give you the house, it's going to tell you the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, the square feet, and the uh, lot size or the yard size, if there is a yard. And then what you can do is you can do view details. And once you do view details, it's going to bring you to the full list and where you can get. I have to sign in again. Where you can get what type of sewer it is, what type of water supply it is. Anything like that will be on this list. In. So view details. Let's see if this works. Login. Okay, so it's bringing me back to my dashboard. But if you wanted to see that house, you could go to your clients or contacts. Real Scout calls them contacts. Sorry, my internet's being a little slow right now. Oh, 
Do they freeze? Oh, there we go. It's just taken a little bit of time. Okay, so we're going to go back into Real Scout. Apologies about the slow internet connection. So we're going to go to contacts. And we're going to go to Patsy and Ken because that's who we want to see. And once you click on their contact info or their name, it's going to bring up um, their email alerts that they have auto nurture, the type of search, residential properties, the um, MLS list and service, we want active, we want single family and the list price. You can also view full criteria. If you want to send them any market activity alerts, you can see that here. Home value alerts, you can see here. And price status change alerts, you can see as well. So all of this in, is enabled for my clients. They just don't have any market activity alerts or a home value alert because they currently rent. So one home viewed last week. So if we click on this, it'll tell us which home was viewed. And then you can click on the address and it should open it. It's opening it very slow. I apologize for that. So now this is where you can see your buyers, who it was matched with, how many times they've seen it, if they liked it, what they rated it. So they have an option to rate the home. They also have an option to um, message you or you, pardon me, you have the option to message them right from the listing. So if you wanted to say, hey, this house would be great. It has a great yard. I know you guys are looking for a yard. You could send this message to them and they would receive an email notification saying Ashley Gendro sent you a message on this property located in Wakefield, New Hampshire. So if you scroll up again, it shows you the pictures from MLS. It gives you all the data. It gives you the property description the list and status, the style of the home. It even gives you a map of where it's located, if it's located on a busy street, off a busy street, general directions, more MLS information, and then just some more building information down here. What I also like about Real Scout is that it also gives you this climate risk rate and right here, which you don't get in MLS. So if you have clients that are, um, you know, kind of on the fence about being in a flood area and not being in a flood area. This is a great tool to use because you could say, okay, this property has a flood risk of 65, which Real Scout considers high versus another property that could have a flood risk of a 45. So they might want to go with that flood risk that's at a 45 versus a 65. The same thing with the storm risk, the temperature risk, a drought risk, and a fire risk. That's all in here. And what these ratings do is they can give your client a better idea of how the climate is, if it's prone to droughts like California and Nevada are, I'm sure their drought risk is fairly high than what ours is because we're not in necessarily a drought region, but we do get them on occasion. So if we are in a drought, then the drought risk will go up a little bit. So Real Scout does pull that data as well. Your remarks, as I mentioned earlier, um, so these remarks will show up on the listen for all of your clients. And it also gives you the list in history of when it was listed, the list in price, um, the elementary school or any school that's nearby. And also if your clients are, are messaging you and you're in Real Scout, you can message the listing agent directly from here. The subject line could be 52, uh, what street is this? 52 Maple Street. 52 Maple Street, Wakefield. And then you could say, hello, Mark. My clients 
are interested in touring this property. Property, X date, Y time, and then send the message to the agent. You could also put your info in here as well. It'll send the message from your email, your registered email with Real Scout to the listing agent. He'll receive it as an email notification. And then once he responds to you, you will get an email notification back that Mark Duffy has responded to you or has emailed you back. So you will get an email notification that he has emailed you back. You can send it directly to your clients if you would like, if they haven't already seen it. And you can also view it as a home buyer. So if you wanted to view it as a home buyer, you would just click view list and as a home buyer. And then it's going to open up how your clients would see this listing. And of course, it's going to make you sign in again, but I'm not going to go through the process of signing in again. But you would sign in and then you would see what they see on the client base inside. On the agent side, there's more to it, as I just demonstrated, where you can email the listing agent, you can call him, you can see where he works, KW, um, you can message them directly from here. So that's what I like about Real Scout is that you can send a message directly to the listing agent, whereas in MLS, you have to click on their name and then their email address to email them. So this is just kind of a one-stop shop, whereas MLS is a multiple step, or you have to copy and paste their email and email them from your um, email server, whether it be Gmail, Yahoo, etc. So to add a client, you click add client. So you would type in their email. So I'm just going to do somebody who's on the call. So I'm going to do Lisa Bigger. You're going to type in her email at lisabigger.com. Her first name, you don't have to put their first name or the last name, but if you have multiple people with the same first name, it's beneficial to put their first and last. I'm just always in the habit of putting first and last name for my clients. So I go ahead and put that in there. Their phone number, I don't put in there and their source. I, you can put um, SOI, Sophia of Influence, or if it's an op city lead, you can put that in there as well. So that tells you where you got that client from. So I'm gonna do create client. Emails are not valid oh, because I forgot the dot and make sure the emails are correct. If the email's not correct, it will tell you. So on here, you can do a listen alert, you can do a market activity alert, or you can do a home value alert. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a listen alert. You want to select the MLS that you are doing it for. So for me, I am licensed in three states, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Maine. So I have um, all three of my MLSs on here. So I know Lisa's looking specifically in Massachusetts, so I'm going to do Massachusetts. But if you do have a client looking in Massachusetts and New Hampshire, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Connecticut, vice versa, you can set them up on multiple searches for the multiple states that they are looking in. So you would just have to use... Um, a different email address because once you use an email address, you cannot reuse it. So if you have a spouse um, or a partner couple or two people, use one for one state, use another email address for another um, state. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do customize list and alert. You can also invite the client to create their own list and alert, which clients can do that on their own as well once they get access to um, Real Scout, they can go in and do it on their own. So you can type in um, the MLS status as active. We can also do in contract. So we can see what's recently come on uh, under contract for her. So she knows the property type you can search as residential. Property subtype, if you wanted a condo or a manufactured home or a condex, a duplex, a mobile home, anything like that, you can type it in here. The minimum price, so let's just do 300. Let's do a max price of 500. Property subtype, we're going to do um, a single family residence.
Again, apologies, my internet is being slow right now. But property type, you would just check off. A single family, there we go. You can search the bedroom criteria. So let's do a max of three bedrooms, a max of three bathrooms. Primary bedroom level, you can put it on the first floor, the basement, the fourth floor, the main floor. You can select whatever option you want for the primary bedroom to be on. Let's do a max square feet of 2,500. You can do that in MLS as well. There are more options. So if you wanted to do um, include zero and blank, you could say yes or no. That's up to you um, for your search criteria. If they want any acres, we can do a max of two acres. Architectural style. So let's say she wants a um, farmhouse. We can select farmhouse. And then property attached, yes or no. You can say no or yes. So what that means is if it's attached to a garage, if it's attached to a breezeway, if it's attached to another house, that's what uh, property attached, yes or no means. You can do a minimum and a maximum of the year built. You can do a minimum of one story and a maximum of three stories. The body type, you can do a double wide or a single wide, but that's for uh, manufactured homes. There is more options that you can do for the body type as well. Listed or status changed within the last 24 hours. I always do the last 24 hours. And what Real Scout does is once you set up your clients, you can have them set up on a daily frequency alert, a weekly alert, a bi-weekly, or an ASAP. So I have my clients set up on an ASAP. So the state, we're going to do mass. The county, you can search counties. You can search um, cities. You can search by county and city. We're just going to do Middlesex for the county, MLS major area. You can type in if you know um, specific towns that they want to be in. You can go ahead and um, type them in or just check them all off. A city, you can go ahead and select specific cities as well if, you, if they want to be in a certain subdivision. So let's just take, for example, there's a new subdivision coming in Andover and you know the name of Rosecliff Meadows. You could go ahead and put that subdivision name in here that they want to be in Rosecliff Meadows. So anything that comes up in Rosecliff Meadows, your client will get an email that they've matched to this property as well. You could also search by zip code. And you can also search by school and location boundaries, which you cannot do in MLS that I have found um, in any of the MLSs. I haven't found that but I'm sure it's there. So if you know that there's a school name, so, um, you know, if it's a town, so uh, Tewksbury High School. So this would match your client to any house that's listed within your certain criteria that is within the Tewksbury High School uh, school boundary lines. And then features, you can also do, um, whoops, sorry for click happy. So features, so if she wanted um, some exterior features, so let's say she wanted uh, fruit trees on her yard, you can select fruit trees, a garden. Um, you can also do uh, rain gutters, a sprinkler system. Um, if you have a client who wants tennis courts, storage, a stone wall, there's many options that you can pick for um, exterior features. Interior features, you can do a quarter bath, a three-quarter bath, you could do an arcway, attic access. You can also select if you want a bar like in the basement or a bar for entertaining, you can select that. You can select um, if you want a bathroom with a tub, if you want a bathroom with a shower stall, tiled with tub and shower. You have a whole variety of interior features that you can, excuse me, that you can select on Real Scout that you cannot select in MLS. Um, so walk-in closets you can select. You can select a country kitchen, for example, crown molding. Parking spaces, you can do a maximum of three, how many ever you want, a minimum of one. Covered spaces, if you want like a carport or if you want the space to be covered. So if it's a condo, some condos have um, 
a garage that you can pull into that's not attached to the property. So you can say you want a minimum of one covered space, a maximum of two covered spaces, garage spaces, you can do two. Parking features assigned, attached, available for purchase, barn, carriage, common, deeded. So any type of um, parking style that there is, Real Scout does give you the option to select. So let's just say, for example, Lisa wanted tandem parking. You could go ahead and select tandem parking and anything that was matching tandem parking would come up. But I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of this criteria because we have no results right now. And you can see your results up here. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to get rid of the garden and I'm going to get rid of the fruit trees. I'm also going to get rid of the covered spaces just so you guys can see what it looks like for results. And I guess there's a zero result. So we're going to, so sometimes if you get too specific, Real Scout will come up with no results, even though there are results out there. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just going through my very specific criteria and making it less specific. I'm going to get rid of the towns and see um, if I get anything. And again, I don't get anything. So then it's just playing around with it like you would an MLS on your search. You can select if they have a waterfront, um, if there's a senior community, if there's accessibility features, community features, pool. If it's an HOA, if they allow pets, lot features, association amenities, if they're looking for a condo, you can select what type of association amenities they want. If they want laundry, if they want parking, if they want a park or a play playground, you can select that all in here. And then you can also select amenities. So if your client is um, somebody who is in equestrian, you can select paddocks for horses. Um, you can select horse amenities. That's in here as well. You can do the list and contract date. So let's just go back to the beginning of November to today and see if we get anything. You can also do open house with open house. Only, ho only homes with open houses. Only homes with photos. And only homes with open houses this weekend. You can select all of those. And then once you do add or remove search options, it's going to go through and tell you, you know, if you want to add anything or not, which we don't want to add anything. So we're going to do view results and there's no results. So that means my search is too specific. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my filters some more. And sometimes, like I said, the lead the least specific, the better. Because if you put in too, too much information, sometimes there's um, too much for Real Scout to go through and it can't find anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and do 750. There's nothing out there. Why is this not giving me any results? So now I get nine results for a list price between 30,000 to 750,000. So if you want to view the results, you can click view results and all of the properties will show up right here. If you want a specific property or specific properties, you can select them, but you can also open them as well. And what this will do is it will open all three listings that you've selected at the same time. So let's just say you're perusing 45 West Street, East Hampton and your clients call you and say they're not interested in this one or they are, well, that's excellent if they are because you can go down here and find the information for the listing agent and send them an email directly within Real Scout and you don't have to go into MLS. And you can go to the next listing and it'll bring you to the next one that you've selected, which is 137 Ford Street in Brockton. Again, it'll give you a basic rundown of all the property information and then if you go to the bottom it tells you who it's listed by and their brokerage and then the next listing same idea it'll give you a basic rundown of the property description if there are any open houses a location map 
Again, general information. If there are any non-public remarks or agent-only firm remarks, those will also be showed right here. So you don't even have to go into MLS to see those. You can see them right here in Real Scout. And we have all three selected, so you can send them directly to your client or you can unselect them. And then you can do save to client. You're going to select the client name. So in this case, the client's Lisa. You're going to do my new home search or whatever you want to title your search. Alert schedule, you're going to do um, handpicked, daily, ASAP, monthly, or disabled. I always do ASAP. And what that means is that as soon as any new listing comes on, it's going to send Lisa an email. And if you're not sure what Real Scout means by ASAP, you can click what does this mean and it'll give you ASAP as an immediate notification. Handpick is alerts are manually sent by you. Daily, it's every day. Monthly are alerts that are sent to them once a month and disabled is that they don't get any email at all. What you can also do too is when you're setting your client up on the search, you can also select send a copy to me. So not only would your client get a copy, but you would get a copy as well of what they got. And then um, the next thing that you could do is you could do send open house reminder before each weekend. So it'll send you and your client an open house reminder before that weekend of that open house for each client or pardon me for each house that has an open house that weekend. And then you're going to save it. And now you've created a property alert for your client. Now your client, I'm going to go back to the dashboard for a second because your client can also like a property or reject a property by clicking a thumbs up as they're interested or a thumbs down as they're not interested. So any orange circle with an open envelope means that they've read that email. Anything with a blue circle in the eye icon means that they've looked at it. If it's a red circle in a closed envelope, that means that they have not opened it. You can see right here, another client has liked this house. So the thumbs up with the green circle means they've liked it. A red circle with a thumbs down means that they don't like it and they're not interested. So you can know that right away. And with any new client, what I tell them is, hey, if I see that you've liked a property in Real Scout, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and schedule a time for us to see it. What works better for you, Saturday or Sunday for showings? If they say Saturday, okay, what time works for you? 11 to 3, after 3, whatever time frame they give me, then I'm going to go ahead and schedule a show in within that time frame. And I, if I see multiple properties, I'll schedule the show ins for the same day and then I'll send them a list of, hey, we're seeing 123 Main Street at 1130. We're seeing 456 Lair Lane at one o'clock or vice versa. But you want to make sure that when you do schedule show ins back to back that you give enough time to see the house. You give enough time for your clients to ask you questions while you're there about the listing. And you also have enough time to get from one listen to the next listen, listen and not have to feel rushed. So that's when I pull up Google Maps and I say, okay, 123 Main Street is here. 456 Lair Lane is here. It takes 10 minutes to get there. So I'm going to do 11 to 1130 for a show in. And then I might do the next show in from 1145 to 1215. So that way we can see three or four houses at a time, and then they can, can compare them. And if they like any, we can discuss which ones they like. And if they want to write an offer on any, we can discuss any offer details. So what I also like about Real Scout is the listing alerts, which we've just gone over, the home value alert. So if you have somebody who's on the fence about selling, you can um, give them a home value alert. So it'll bring you to a different dashboard within Real Scout. So this is kind of like doing a CMA a little bit. So home value, what you would do is you would add a client alert for this as well. You would follow the same pro, uh, 
excuse me, not protocol. You would follow the same method as you did for setting them up on a search. So let's add a client. We're going to add, I'll do me this time, I'll create client. So since I've already used that email, it's not gonna allow me to use it. Um, so let's just say you had a client um, I know Robin Foley's in here, but I think I've used her before, so I don't know if it'll work. Robin, if you're still in here, create client. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a home value alert. You're going to create home value alert. It's going to bring you to a different window. And you're going to select a client. We're going to go down and select. Where did Robin Foley go? Okay. So I guess I put my name as Robin's name and Robin's email. So um, pardon me for that. So your address, you'll type in your address. So let's just do 10 Bittersweet Drive. The city would be Manchester. The state would be New Hampshire. And then your zip code. 03109 and then create alert with your defaults or you can customize and preview the alert and then create home value alert. So now you can do your estimated valuation of let's just say 575 and you can do um, deselect Zillow to show the estimate, the estimate range. Adam, I'm not really sure what that program is. Haven't um, heard of that real estate program yet. So it's probably something similar to zero, the neighborhood area, the message. And now you can customize emails or you can do save and update preview. So we're just going to save it. And now it's going to come up with what's happening at 10 Bittersweet Drive. You can request a valuation update. Um, you can send a quick message to this, um, to the client buyer audience by price range. So it breaks it down for you. So 91% um, bought at this price range, 73% bought at this price range. So it breaks it down um, in the price range. So you can see how much of, um, or not how much, but what price range is most frequented in that specific area, which can be useful for some clients who have a limited budget and can only go up to a certain amount and they can't exceed that, this information could be great for them. So that way they can see the numbers and be like, okay, it's I'm not the only one. There's more people like me. And because some people can get discouraged if written dozens or even, you know, dozens and dozens of offers and they're just not getting accepted. You could go through this report and show them all of this data to help them understand the market better. So then you can do the recently sold, the recently listed, however you wanted to categorize it. You could, but we're going to do what's recently listed. And so for this area, there's been two that have been recently listed. And it shows you one was listed at $699.9, the other was listed at $439.9. You can open them. Okay, or not. You can generally open the list and then it'll give you the information about it. So the, if a client would want more details, they could do request details and they'll um, you will get a notification that Robin Foley has requested more details on a home valuation. There is a way that you can, excuse me, that you can put your Real Scout home valuation in your email signature. So if you want to do a deeper dive into Real Scout, go to layerrealty.com backslash briefings um, for a session with me on Real Scout, and we can dive into that a little deeper. And then the last quick thing is market activity alerts. And with the market activity alerts, what I like about this is that it will show your buyers or your sellers how many other sellers are in the area, how many other buyers are in the area. So we're going to do a city of Manchester. Manchester, New Hampshire. You can do a minimum price and a maximum price. So let's just set the maximum price at 650000 And 
we are going to click preview market activity alert. Again, you're going to select the client that you want to share it with. So you want to share it with Lisa, select a schedule, a biweekly, a monthly, a quarterly, or a manually, or you can send it now. So if you select manually, then what you will need to do is you will need to manually send this report to your client. I have my clients set up on a bi-weekly schedule. So a um, market activity alert for buyers will go out to my clients every other week. Automatically, I don't have to do anything. So Real Scout does have a little bit of set it and forget it um, functionality, just like Isaac does our preferred CRM at Lair. So right now you can see in the past 90 days for the market activity, there have been 723 buyers in this area of Manchester, the entire town. And there have been 9,189 buyer interactions. But if you wanted to just see the last 30 days, you could go ahead and select the last 30 days and it'll give you that data. So as you can see, it's declined over the last 90 days. So your active buyers is 400. Your number of buyer interactions is 3,143. You could even go back a full year and see that information for a year. So if we go back a year, it's going to give us all of that information. So the number of active buyers, the number of buyer interactions, and then if you scroll down, it's going to give you active buyers over time in a graph. You can hide it if it's an incomplete month. So like right now, we're in the middle of November. You can hide it so that data isn't represented or you could show it so that it is represented. It also gives you the top viewed listings in this specific town. So it'll tell you um, the status of the listing, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, the price, the size, or square feet of the house, the lot size, and um, when it was put on Real Scout. So you have all of that data right here. And the same thing goes for recently sold. Again, you have your property address, the status as sold, the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, the price, the square foot, the lot size, and uh, when it was on the site. And then also for recently listed or recently updated listings. So if a listing just went live. It'll be in this recently listed. If there was a listing that you've been keeping an eye on for a particular buyer to drop price, it'll show up in the updated listings. Again, the property address, the status, the bed, the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, the price, again, the square feet, the lot size, and how long it has been on Real Scout. So if you want to send this as a report to your buyer, you would save market alert. And now it's going to um, send Lisa this market alert. And this market alert has been added to Lisa. So bi-weekly, she will get this alert of um, Manchester. And she'll be able to see, okay, how many other buyers are in the area that she's looking? How many buyers I've had interactions with listing agents or other agents. Um, it could be an agent hosting an open house for the listing agent or on behalf of the listing agent. So it encompasses any buyer interaction that has happened in the past year, 90 days, 60 days, and I believe 30 days and 180 days. So you have your standard time frames for the market um for the market activity. So that's just a quick rundown on Real Scout and the most important features. If you have any other questions, go ahead and put them in the chat because we still do have a few minutes left. So just let me know if anyone has any questions. And like I said, if you want to um, go ahead and schedule a briefing section, briefing session with me to go further in depth with, um, with Real Scout, I'm going to put the link in the chat for you guys. I just got to pull it up for you.
again, my internet's being very slow right now, so I apologize. Alrighty. My internet's being very slow today. And I'm not sure why. Why are you being very slow, internet? You're welcome, Yolanda. I just had this link up as well. Here it is. All right. So here's the link. Um, so if you guys want to go further in depth, you're welcome, Shauna. You would just go to this link. You would select what type of briefing you want. It would be Real Scout. So it's a 30 minute one on one Zoom call with me and you and Real Scout or Isaac or Boston Logic or Canva. If you want any briefing session, go ahead and fill out that form. It emails um, Happy Agent and then I get notified and then we can um, pick a date and a time that works. And what I usually do is I give you a couple of options of a couple of times that I am um, available. So if none of those times work for you, let me know what works for you and we can figure something out. You're welcome, Robin. Yes, the Real Scout does update um, every so often. So such as the auto nurture, that's new. So if you haven't used it, go ahead and, and enable it for your clients because like I said, it'll automatically send them some um, market data, market insights, stuff like that, that you might not think to send them real scout will do that automatically for them now all right thank you guys thanks for being here and watching my first lunch and learn i appreciate it and if you have any questions as always email happy agent at lairrealty.com and one of our um support staff members or um happy agent team members will get back to you and I hope you guys enjoy the day.